A group of Senate Republicans unveiling a counter proposal to President Biden's $2.3 trillion infrastructure plan. This is a five year, $568 billion uh, package. Puts money towards uh, roads and bridges and broadband, public transit. Uh, but it does leave out things that senators uh, don't, these senators don't consider infrastructure, like an expansion of Medicaid. And it's funded with user fees and redirected federal dollars instead of uh, depending on tax increases. Join us now to talk about this and also reports that President Biden wants to hike capital gains taxes on the wealthy. West Virginia Senator Shelley Moore Capito, she's uh, leading the GOP infrastructure effort. I guess first thing, Senator, uh, welcome, but I guess first thing I'd ask. Thanks. You're at five, five and change, uh, 568. Uh, the administration, President Biden at 2.3 trillion. Mm -hmm. Even if it was the Biden that we saw at the inauguration, let's say it was that Biden. Remember that Biden? Very <laughs> unifying, lots of bipartisan. If it was that Biden, what would you really have to do? to compromise? Would you have to go to 1.5, really, realistically? And with the Biden we actually have, you'd have to go to 2.3. Well, here's, here's, here's what I think the distinction is here. First of all, the, the president himself has had Republicans down to the White House and also asked, well, what is your plan? And so what we did was we defined infrastructure, as you mentioned, and we took from the president's plan and, uh, and other ideas physical core infrastructure. And so I think if you take an apples to apples comparison of the president's plan and our plan, we're really not, it, he's not up into the $2 trillion when you're looking at physical core infrastructure. He's probably just shy of $1 trillion. And so I think that's where our starting point is, where we sit down, define the infrastructure, and then see if we miss something, where we need to, you know, uh, compromise and how we can move forward. I think that there's a real hunger in the, in the country and also in the, in the Congress for us to be able to work something out that we've been able to work out over decades, and that is infrastructure and, and surface transportation. Do you ever? So I think, yeah, sorry. I know, Senator, I was just wondering, do you ever feel like you're just going through the motions? That, that sounds great, really. Mm -hmm. uh, it really does sound great. But it does. Uh, it, how much of your, uh, of, of the job right now is just going is going through the motions They've, they're going to do reconciliation they're going to do what they want to do how much of it is just i don't know it's just going through the motion well you know it, here's how i look at that i i, I say yes they can go th they can go ahead and and ram the 2.2 .2 trillion or something close to that do it by reconciliation and shut the door on republicans uh why haven't they already started to do that if that's what they want to do there have been signals from other senators and from the president himself that he really does want to negotiate. So I'm going to go with that. But, you know, I did mention earlier that uh, I'm not interested in being window dressing and just make it look like we're trying to work. But if we as Republicans don't come out for, for the principles and the, and the concepts that right. we believe in, then we don't have a leg to stand on here uh, w when the door gets shut mm -hmm. on us. So, you know, lessons learned, maybe. You got the, the other issue is that the birdbath is going to probably mean that there's, you know, there's certain things that, that, that aren't going right. to be able to be in reconciliation. Maybe that could be something. But I've asked Republicans, what are they willing to, to give in return for something? And they, they don't want to give anything. You okay with 25 percent? Uh, we'll get to the, the, the latest news on taxes in a second, but would you go to 25 percent on corporations uh, instead of where it is at 21 or in, in compromise from 28? No, I think the plan that we put forward uh, doesn't require any uh, taxes raised. We do uh, rely on user fees and we do repurpose co COVID dollars, billions, hundreds of billions of dollars that are not even going to be spent till the off years. Give some states and locals flexibility with their COVID dollars too. Uh, no, I'm not interested in raising the, the corporate tax because I think as we saw pre-pandemic, all of the uh, resultant uh, raise in uh, wages in my state of West Virginia, more people working, more variety and diversity in the workforce, all of those good things. So I'm not, I'm not interested in going back to that. I voted for that tax cut bill and I stand by the results. But I think we can get there on infrastructure without having to, to go. If, if that's what they want to do, they can do that through reconciliation and, and try to find their 50 votes. Right. Uh, yeah, and, and we know you're from West Virginia. We always, we always, I'm sorry about that. It's like that other guy. It's like, you know, he gets so much, uh, he's so important. I mean, you, it, it, 
<laughs> you got to hey, get in as it should be. As it should be. <laughs> as it should be. <laughs> Senator, what about the um, the the? Uh, I don't know whether it's going to happen, but the rumors that we heard: capital gains uh, going to 43 percent on people that make more than a million dollars a year. That's a non-starter for you and, and most Republicans as well, I guess. Honestly, when I tuned into the show really early this morning and I heard this because I hadn't heard it last night, I, I thought it was Groundhog Day. I'm, I'm like, is there is there not a tax that's not going to be raised just in enormous amounts to fulfill the, the Green New Deal and other promises that were made during the campaign? I mean, I don't see why the thirst for raising taxes is is so incredibly large when we see what that impacts that's going to have on our economy, on our job creation and all of that. Why don't we move forward uh, and, and try to live within our means and, and, and provide uh, sustainability in, in terms of our workforce and predictability in terms of the tax structure? So I can't support that. And I seriously think I, I seriously when I woke up this morning. I went, what? Another another huge raise in taxes. We haven't even you know finished with the first one he put forward. Senator, um, yes. question for you, but yeah. relates to all of this, which is to say, um, we talk about and we've been talking about it for the past couple of weeks, actually, that there's an enormous amount of money um, that is likely owed to the government uh, that effectively is being evaded. There are some studies that suggest mm -hmm. in the order of six hundred billion dollars annually, uh, there's the money that that is owed to the government that effectively taxpayers are, are genuinely evading. Uh, and they're evading it because we're, we aren't necessarily funding the IRS uh, properly and they don't have the systems uh, to properly collect it. My question to you is, at least in my view, we could actually have a very different conversation about whether we need to raise taxes or not if we actually just, just collected the money that we, we need to in the beginning. Would you be prepared to, to do that? Well, a couple things. I think nothing burns the average taxpayer more to think somebody's not paying their fair share. And, and we know that's happening. I was actually the appropriator for uh, the IRS uh, uh, on, the, on the, the, the chair of that subcommittee in appropriations. And their computer systems, you are absolutely right, are so outdated. It's astonishing, really, when you, when you start to learn about it. So I, I think we need to modernize the systems. I think we need to come up with a better way to make sure people are paying, the, people and whoever else companies are paying their fair share. So it's something I'm willing to look at, yes. But I don't want to get into a situation where we're, uh, you know, we're uh, overfunding the IRS to the point where uh, certain segments of our population are being um, uh, pursued to pay their taxes and certain other parts of our population are not, whether for political, religious or whatever reasons. So I think we have to be careful there. But I do think you're pointing to a, a disparity that we have within the government, and that is to get everybody to pay their fair share and to collect those uncollected taxes. And it, it is astonishing the amounts that you see. You th if, if you had to do something, Senator, we got to go. But if you had to do something, would you just raise the, the marginal rate on, on wealthy pe people, make it more progressive? Would that be less? Uh, do you think that would, uh, that would harm things less than, than a capital gains move or a corporate tax? You know, I mean, I think at this point, my position is I'd rather not raise taxes on anybody. I'd rather try to keep growing the economy, move, move out of the pandemic. Sure. I mean, our communities are flush with money, flush with money. And we need to make sure that they're spending this money in, a, in a, an efficient and, and useful way. That's my main concern right now. And, and, and let's see if we can pull this infrastructure package together. Ooh. I know you said it's, what, pie in the sky? I, no. I, I'm still going, going with motions. it. I'm an optimist. Going through the motions. <laughs> going. I think it, I, I just want to congratulate you. I mean, it, it's a pretty incredible concept to put infrastructure back into an infrastructure bill. So I, I do want to, uh, to compliment you on that, Senator. So well, thank, you. Uh, thank you. I don't know. How'd you come Wish up with luck. that? <laughs> yeah. Wish Senator us luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Senator Capito, thank you. Andrew. Thanks.